Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to showcase version 1.2 of the immersive template asset from the Unreal Marketplace. In this update, I added multiplayer replication, a footstep system, and some additional cleaning up. This video is timestamped, so feel free to skip around to the sections you're interested in or just check out the whole thing for a nice overview. Let's start with the multiplayer. I haven't worked on replication before, but I know a lot of people would want it, so I took a stab at adding it anyway with this update. There are a few major issues that I've encountered and I'll cover it in a bit, but let me start by showing you what works and the other features of the update. So when I open up a new project, we can put two players in client mode and hit play. So you can see that each of the players have their own HUD, which is independent to each other's. They can interact with objects and each person can see what the other is doing. Not only that, each person will see the widgets pop up for themselves without affecting the other, as well as seeing the location highlights. For torches, you can hear the fire fade in and out for each player as they get close or away from it, as well as turn it on and off properly based on the state of the torch when they're picking it up. The interactable counter works as well, the chairs and the key card reader all work to where people can interact with it. It'll be blocked if someone else tries to go interact with it while someone is there. There is a bug with the chairs, but I'll go more in depth when I cover the main issues. Then there's also the footsteps that play louder when running, quieter when walking, and the ones that leave a little trail behind. And yeah, it's replicated. And that's pretty much it. And before I get into the issues for multiplayer, again, this is my first time working with replication. So if everything's just awful and not how it's supposed to be done, feel free to let me know and I'll see whether or not I scrap it or figure something else out. Okay, so next feature is the footstep system. So what I built is actually insanely simple in a great way. It's really easy to use and I'm gonna be building this out a lot more in depth with the additional locomotion systems I add and other things in the future. So first thing you wanna do is open up your animation. Let's use the run animation and I'll delete the existing notifies and what you do is right click, add notify, A and notify on each point where the foot touches the ground. Then open up the immersive component and go to the footstep system. And you'll see these two string array variables here. Now what I've built is for you to add any word that is in the name of your animation, this system will search for it. And if it matches in any one of the arrays, it will play that type of footstep. So for example, we want footsteps to play on our run animation, which out of the two arrays is this bottom array being checked here. So click on the run array variable and you'll add the word run run. It's already here by default. Now, if your animation has that word in it, it's going to trigger the integer two over here for a heavier footstep particle and play the respective sound. So if your animation for run was spelled with like an M, then you won't hear that footstep or generate particles until you either add that spelling into the array or add the word from the arrays list into the animation name. See, so if I change the animation name to rum with an M, you won't hear anything. But all I have to do is either add that spelling to the array and boom, it works. By default, there are no particles spawning for walking, but I've already set up a bool that you can just easily set to true. And it's already set up so that the particles will be smaller and audio is quieter for walking. Feel free to dive more into the blueprints to see how it works. They're all commented out, but I'm gonna make a separate video explaining more in depth about how this system works. Not only that, but yes, I will set it up to detect what type of surface you're running on and play different sounds and particles based on that. To see what you can customize, I've gone and separated the variables with additional comments all throughout. Another thing I've added was the option to set the release animation whenever releasing objects. It's on and set to middle by default, but that way you can have a consistent release animation play every single time. The last thing I want to mention is I completely removed, I think, all of the event ticks that I was using. So everything is run based off events, functions, and timers as efficiently as possible. So that's it for the updates. I'm pretty sure that should be everything. And if not, another video will come out. So back to multiplayer and and specifically the issues. As I said, this is my first attempt and I spent about the last two and a half weeks getting it to this point, but there are some major problems that I will cover now. So if you're experienced with multiplayer, then I assume these things will be easy for you and you'll know how to fix it. 
Again, I'm still learning. Okay, so issue one is that if a character releases an object while both are in client mode, the object seems to go flying away. From debugging, the issue seems to come from setting the collision back on to when it's being detached. If I don't set the collision on, it will not simulate physics and just hang in place when it's released, which is no good. Now, I said this happens if they're both in client mode. As soon as you put one person in listen server mode, all of that goes away and it works totally fine. I have no idea why, and the internet is useless in answering this. I'm a noob and I spent like three solid days just trying to fix this, but I can't figure it out. Eventually I will. The other thing I noticed when debugging is that when the player holds an object, the location of it from the client side are all the same, but not the server. Again, only when in client mode. Once a server player is there, no issues. The location of the object matches the entire time. It's almost like it's not picking up the variable indicating that the player is holding an object on the server side, but yeah, that, that's issue one. A workaround that I would suggest would be to only allow using locations when placing objects down. Just for now, it's temporary. Now, issue two, it's a big one. It's when two players are next to each other and an interactable, if a player holding an object puts it down and another player picks it up right next to them, the first player freezes up mid animation and sometimes just even when they're not animating and they can't move. What I believe is happening is that the second player comes into contact with the object. It's becoming the player reference of the object and so the first player is removed as the reference and doesn't get closed out with the remaining logic enabling their interaction and movement. I'm sure this has to do with how I have the logic being set up so I'll get it fixed eventually as I'm learning more about this stuff. Okay so the final issue at least it's the last one that I know about is that when a player becomes irrelevant to another and interacts with an object I get reference errors. I'm not too sure why because the objects are never checking for every single player or anything like that. I use a few rep notifies so I'm pretty sure that's where the fix is but I have to spend more time to figure it out. Another similar issue to this is having two players but starting out in standalone mode. Both players are invisible to each other kind of in their own world. I think they are in their own world but you get reference errors like when you try to interact. Again I genuinely don't know much about this so I do apologize. But yeah this is as far as I've gotten and I'm just gonna mark this as experimental for now but I'll still actively work on completely resolving these issues and continue building out additional features for multiplayer. Now, if you've bought this already, but you're concerned on anything drastically changing, I'm happy to tell you that the layout is almost exactly the same with just a few tweaks. Check out the video linked below where I'm gonna go more in depth about how to use replication with this asset if you wanna continue working with multiplayer. And I'd also recommend watching this even if you aren't using multiplayer, just so you can see how things flow for single player in case you're unsure about how things work and if the extra nodes are maybe confusing to you. As I said, the next video is gonna go more in depth as to the smaller changes and other details, but some of the things I also wanted to quickly mention is one, I'm no longer having the immersive character placed into the world by default for auto possession, because if you launch it in multiplayer, one of the players gets stuck inside. So if you're doing this for single player only, Feel free to change that, but just take note of it. Two is that continuing with the multiplayer changes, I've created a game mode with the default pawn being the immersive character and the player controller being this new player controller that I also created. You would just wanna add these two things to your world if you're trying to integrate it for multiplayer. But if not, then you're totally fine to just drag and possess the immersive character blueprint or assign it a controller. Okay, I feel like this went on way longer than I wanted it to, but I hope this helped explain the new changes in a brief overview. If there are any questions, please feel free to reach out. Again, multiplayer is experimental, and if everything that I've added ends up being more of a hindrance, more confusing, just let me know. I'm totally not opposed to seeing if I can even make two versions of like the main character and throw them into separate folders, one for single player games and another for multiplayer. That way people don't have to deal with things they're not interested in. But yeah, just let me know. Thanks for watching. Now that this update is out, I'm gonna grind out some more videos, tutorials, and begin working on the next update. I'll catch you all later. Bye.